Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sohn. Today we're going to be looking at the possible rational zeros of a polynomial, which is better known as the PRZs because possible rational zeros just takes way too much time to write down. And you find them relatively easily. You take your factors of the last term, all of them, and divide or put it over and make it a fraction of the factors of the first term. And it includes all of the positive and negative values of this when you do it, okay? So if we had a question that looked like this, where I had 5x to the third minus 49x squared minus 55x, and then minus 9, we don't worry about the fact that it is a negative 9. We are only concerned about the 5, that first term, and the 9, that last term. So first term and last term, those are the only two that matter. And you look at them, and then you determine what are the factors of 9. Well, the things that multiply to equal 9, the last term, would be 1 and 9, and then 3 and 3, and you don't need to write out the 3 twice. And then the factors of the first term, which are just 1 and 5. And if we wanted to find the possible rational zeros, which has a lot of benefit, because if you know what the possibilities are, then you're not randomly guessing over and over again, because a lot of these things, including this one, are just flat out probably not factorable. All right? So we're going to list out the 1 over 1, and then 1 over 5, and then 9 over 1 and 9 over 5, and then 3 over 1, and then 3 over 5. And essentially, these are the possible rational zeros, and they can either be positive or negative, 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 and positive or negative. And if you had to find the actual zeros, so that's where this actually holds value, okay? So if you have a graphing calculator, you could graph this, and you could look and you'd be like, mm hmm, I know my three zeros, one, two, three, and you could be able to find them out directly. But if you don't have a graphing calculator, or perhaps if these two over here are decimals, like a square root of five over five, weird decimal, you would never know, okay? So what you would need to do is use these possibilities to do your synthetic division, and they help narrow it down so you're not completely guessing and checking over and over and over again. Now, typically when you would do that, you would pick the easier numbers first. You would pick 1 and negative 1, and you would pick 3 and negative 3 before you start picking 1 fifth and negative 1 fifth, okay? But again, this is specifically if you don't have a graphing calculator or if you look at your graph and you're looking at like negative 3.2-ish and negative 1 point, oh, that would be positive 1.7, and this is like 4.8. If you looked at three numbers that look like that, well, then you'd be like, well... Out of those, which one do I think is one of the zeros? And out of the, the three choices that I gave you, 1.7 kind of looks like 9 over 5, just saying. Uh, it's close to that. And that would be the benefit of it. If you had a graph and all three of the zeros, or even if you only had one of the zeros, if it was a decimal, then you need your PRZs. Otherwise, if you don't have a graph, that's all you got to go with. You, got, you just start guessing and checking until you find the actual zeros which is another video and is very time consuming. So we got two different videos on finding the zeros. This is just the possible zeros. These aren't the zeros. These are the possible actual like real zeros, rational zeros that you could get. All right. I will catch you all in the next video. Be sure to watch the finding all zeros easy way and finding all zeros when they happen to be quadratic formula way. Have a good one. Bye.